So their middle, best middle hitter, one of the country's top efficiency hitters. Got to get those two the ball a lot, and right there, Blair Brown gets the very first set. And then the young thing, the other thing, of course, is discipline. The, I mentioned the left side blockers, one of them coming into the front row right now. Two freshmen playing outside for Penn State. Can they stay disciplined? Because a lot of the offense for Duke is going to come their way. And amazing for Penn State, they've lost four All-Americans in the last two years, all of them currently playing with the U.S. national team. And yet here is Russ Rose, the number four seed in the tournament, and all of a sudden they're the team to beat again because one, two, and three have been knocked out, including Stanford, the number three seed earlier today. We see two for two. The ball is going to go to Blair Brown a lot. She's already gotten the first two sets and expect her to get the ball out of the back row also. Strong serve from Dorico. That's been one of their trademarks during this three-year run of national championships. They've served it very strongly. Take a lot of risks, and usually it's a high reward. Yep, and in fact, she struggled with that a little. Coach Rose has talked about how he wants her to rip it like that. Trouble for Duke right there. She earns two points on her serve. She feels a little pressure, though, because some of the other serves, servers on her team, Coach Rose, one of them, one of them tragic, and so she feels like, hey, I've got to keep the ball in. So it's this tension between keeping it in and unleashing, and so far unleashing and scoring two points for her team. Dorico, the senior from Byron, New York, and there's that risk that we talked about. She gives a point back to four years in the starting rotation for this Penn State team, a, a key cog in their run of national championships. Claire Smalzer for the ACC champs, the senior out of Illinois, made the transition from starting libero the last two years to now hitting on the outside. And there's the big Penn State block, another one of the trademarks for their success. And we, we saw them in the walkthrough today emphasizing being strong with this left hand. So you can see right there, number one, Ariel Scott, strong with her left hand. She gets the stuff. She's going to get a lot of opportunities. Let's see if it comes right back her way. Nope, up to the other side. And the kill for Duke and Sophia Dunworth, the junior from Pleasanton, California. She takes the most swings of anybody on the team. one of five all ACC performers in this lineup for Duke as they won another ACC title. It's the winningest program in ACC history. Big swing out of the back from Claire Smalzer. You mentioned all those all ACC players. The only ones not to get all ACC are their two left side players themselves. So that's an area where Penn State's going to try to attack. Duke in transition. Dunworth had it blocked. Ariel Scott stuffed. Back outside to Dunworth for Duke. Over on two for Catnack. Point Blue Devils. Wow, Coach Rose is not going to be happy about that one. That came from way off the net. And the farther the set is off the net, and puts it over on the second contact like that, the more time the defense has, has to come up with that one. Double contact called on Penn State, point Duke. And the Blue Devils take the lead here in the opening set. And we play best three of five. Games are to 25. If we go to the fifth, it's to 15, half the win by two. Ariel Scott with the kill. A lot of freshmen in the rotation for Penn State tonight. In fact, freshmen touching the first contact in that last rally with McClendon making the pass, and then the last contact with Scott, carrying a lot of the load for Penn State this year with a young group. Could see as many as three on the court at one time for the Nittany Lions. There's McClendon dug up by Duke. And then the delayed call that the ball was down. I think it was tougher for the up official to be able to see this, but all the Penn State players thought it was a half volley there, that it actually hit the floor and then the defender's hand. Rico pops it up. Here's Deja McClendon 
And the freshman again striking from Louisville, Kentucky. What a nice dig by Dorico back there. Lining herself up in a perfect position. And then the setter can make an easy play. She keeps that ball off the net. You've got the senior libero, Karch, and the senior defensive specialist. They are given a lot of room to roam defensively for Penn State. That they are. And Quilico in particular puts herself in good spots. Coach Rose gives a lot of credit to Dorico for actually sacrificing herself a little and, and focusing more on her teammates and trying to provide leadership. Trying to set up the middle, and Gray is stuffed. Point Penn State, 10-6, Nittany Lions in the first. And a timeout call by head coach Jolene Nagel. Three straight national championships. Plenty of hardware in the trophy case here at Rec Hall. They may not be done yet. Three ball, Nittany Lions. Glass to Megan Hodge. It's over. The Penn State Nittany Lions are the 2007 national champions. Krista's going to set it. Fawcett running in. Off the block. The national championship for the second year in a row goes to a perfect Penn State Nittany Lions team. 38 in a The last three championship trophies residing in Happy Valley. And Penn State, the four seed this year, is the top seed remaining in the tournament with three seeds eliminated. Number one, Florida. Number two, Nebraska. Number three, Stanford, all gone. And Penn State's record-breaking run may continue as a result. Another good dig from Dorico and McClendon slams it home. And you see one of the things that Kristen Carpenter, the setter for Penn State, has done is just take the errant pass and the scramble play and put it in a good position for hitters to take great swings. That time, McClendon with the great swing going cross court. And Carpenter will be a key to their success, not a natural setter playing outside most of her career and now taking over the duties. And you can see she's five six. Duke would be very smart to attack at her a lot as the smallest blocker, the smallest front row player on the court. But Penn State is working to adapt and adjust and cover for that, knowing that opponents are going to attack that position a lot. Aila Waterfield, the sophomore from Long Beach Poly High School out in California on the serve. And it's a good one, the ace, Point Duke. Even Carpenter can't get to that ball. Very nice serve by Waterfield. Did a nice job last night against Missouri, too. Trying to get the ball to McClendon, the youngest passer of this group. She doesn't have much opportunity there. McClendon makes the pass. Carpenter tried to put it away in two. Karch Karai with the second contact over here on press <laughs> row. Point Penn State. That's one thing Carpenter is going to do. Even though she's 5'6", a very high jumper, she's going to be take the offense into her hands at the net if she gets an opportunity. Pat Mack. Good help by McClendon there on the outside. The team of balls up. Into the lineup, side by side with McClendon for the stuff. Two straight times you saw McClendon helping in the middle, and so she gets the great touch, and then the second time, the stuff. You'll watch her later in this rally, right there, number 18 McClendon, all over that. When you get two blockers up on the quick hitter, the opposing quick hitter, both blockers have done a nice job reading. Boy, the freshman on fire and very reminiscent of Megan Hodge, who always seemed to play her best in the postseason. And her numbers.